All right, this is Pete over at SWRNC, and uh, it's been a long Saturday. Uh, we got a vehicle wet sanded, ready for buffing, a big giant El Camino. Uh, we worked on a collision job for a while. Uh, we worked on a Volkswagen Carmagia doing body work, and we also got a new job in the shop. It's a 1934 Ford Street Beast car, but it's a very unusual Street Beast car. Now, what a Street Beast car is, it's a fiberglass kit car. But this isn't no ordinary kit car. This is a unibody style kit car. That means the, it's a one piece body. The fenders and the running boards are molded to the body and uh, you don't have to bolt them on or nothing. It's just one giant body you throw down on the frame and uh, then you build the car. You've seen a lot of them over here if you've been watching my videos. Uh, the one that uh, we got today, though, many went all the way down to uh, Austin, Texas to pick it up. It's a very unusual one, and uh, it was built a certain way for a certain person, and we're going to call the owner, and we're going to get a little uh, interview with him over the phone before we go look at the vehicle. Well, we just got done moving our uh, fiberglass kit car, street beast cars around, and uh, we got the Cabriolet convertible in the shop, and we also got the car that we've been talking about, uh, the gentleman that built the car for his uh, paralegic son, paraplegic son, uh, paralyzed from the waist up, Eddie. That means it's all hand control. Oh. Yeah, Armand. Yes. What's going on? Not much. Okay, uh, we got your car unloaded. Uh, of course, you need brake work on that thing. Yes. Yeah, the brakes are not working, dude. Well, I replaced the line and I didn't get all the air out. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of dangerous. I wish I would have known about that. Uh, I almost ran into a car in my shop when I was pulling it in. Anyway, we got it unloaded. Now, uh, you want me to go ahead? We're going to repaint the car, am I correct? Yeah. Okay, we're going to put the back glass in the car. Uh, I'll go ahead and trim that back glass uh, window opening up how it's supposed to be. Uh, we're going to have to remove the uh, headliner to put the back glass in and uh, then you want to go ahead and get the interior and then of course uh, when we're all done painting it, uh, put the windshield back in it. Yes. Okay. Now let me ask you this, that's a pretty unusual car bud. Yeah, it's just a, a, a dark gray. We were trying to match the wheels. Okay. Well I'm not talking about the color, I'm talking about the car itself. Oh very unusual and uh, you and your son built that by yourself yes wow I saw how you made I mean there's a lot of intricate stuff on that thing you got those headlight uh, brackets you made I guess yes that's pretty neat now uh, how did you cut those you cut all the fenders and the running boards off that thing and made it a high boy yes I did yeah that looks now really this good guy built this car for his son so he can drive it dude his son's always wanted a hot rod and you know his dad did it for him his dad made it and this ain't just a regular kit car. This is a street beast kit car. Do you know what that is? Yep. That's a one piece body. It doesn't have bolt on fenders. So the guy had to fabricate the car to make it a high boy. Let's look it over and let's check it out. So if you look right here, this is the car that Armand was talking about. Uh, it's actually one of these cars right here. Come on over here, Eddie. It's actually one of these cars right here. Now this is a, of course a convertible, but what we're looking at, we're looking at the fenders. If you look at this car, you can see these are one-piece bodies. They're molded as a unibody car that does not have any bolt-on fenders and uh, everything's molded out of the mold, straight out of the mold. So now we look over here at this car, Eddie. Look at this car. And that guy has created his own street rod fabrication, uh, meditation, uh, you know, psychopathic fucking situation and made the solutions. And uh, uh, what size motors in that thing? What kind of motor is that? Is that a dual overhead cam Ford big block or something? That's what it is. What is it? What size is it? It's a 4.6 dual overhead cam 
Now, what, what kind of car would that motor be out of, Armand? Uh, it came out of a Mach 1. A Mach 1 Mustang. Now, what year would that be? Would that be like back in the 90s, 80s, 70s? 2003. That's an 03 big block Mach 1 Mustang dual overhead cam. That's pretty rare, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's get Baloney's idea. What do you think of this car, Baloney? What are you thinking? This one? Yeah. I like the tires. The guy that built the car for his son is paraplegic son. Yeah. What well, do you think of that idea? Well, that's better than quadriplegic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now, does any of you guys know what type of engine this is, Eddie? Do you know what type it is? Ford. Uh, well, it's a Ford, but what is it? It's a big block Ford engine, bud. What it is, it's a Mach 1 big block dual overhead cam engine. Do you know how rare that is? Not very many. That's a very, very rare motor. And to make it even more rare, if you look at it, it's fuel injection to boot. What you're looking at here is a, 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 a racing engine icon. All right, these are the motors that they put in the NASCARs way back when. You can see that it's a big block. You can see that it's, it's, uh, it's just a humongous, giant fucking engine. Uh, does anybody know where the spark plugs are in this? Can you find them anywhere? Do you see them anywhere? Well, hold on. Look for the spark plug wires and the spark plugs. Let me see if you guys can find them, all right? There's one, two, three, four. Okay, that's your fuel injectors. Yeah. That's your fuel injectors, Eddie. That's not the... That's your fuel injector rack. All right. Let's look at the spark plug wires. You guys are going to be amazed. Are you ready for this? Do you see these covers right here? These covers come off, and that's where your spark plugs and wires are at inside there, all right? Because this is actually Ford's impression of the Hemi engine. Now, your son, you said he's uh, paraplegic? Yes. What, is he uh, par is he's paralyzed from the waist down or what? He's paralyzed from the chest down. Oh, my God. Well, I, I'm sorry to hear about that, but he helped you build that, or you built it specially for him, or what? He kept basically you... built it for him. He told me what he wanted. Yeah, he kept you company out in the garage, huh? Yeah. Now, is he going to drive this thing? Yes. That's you can great. see right there, there's all the hand controls. Everything goes down to the pedals. Of course, that needs all, uh, you know, all schematically, uh, you know, synchronized up and everything, but it does run. So besides that, he literally got this big, giant, humongous, big block, dual overhead cam engine inside this little car. How long did it take you to build that thing? Uh, a year and a half. That's not bad. For all the work you did to it, that's not bad at all. Thanks. So, you got that car from Street Beast. Of course, Street Beast has closed down. They aren't in business anymore. Did they screw you around? Did you get all your parts? Did you get your car from them all right? I didn't get the car from them. I bought it from a private individual. Oh, okay. But he never put it together. Oh, so it was still in the crate, basically. Yeah. Wow. Okay, what does that have to do with anything, Tony? Well, well, he probably cut those out for the filters and stuff. All right, you're not making sense. The engine is in the car. The engine well, is fucking in the car and making the car run. Am I right, Eddie? This right here. Okay. I would say that's. It's in the engine, though. It's in the car. It kind of looks like it's been for the right. So end. it's still in the car, dude. I would say that's not the engine totally in the okay, car. Okay, Tony. I'm sorry. You know what? Next time we do, next time the guy does it, I'm gonna give him your phone number so you can do well, it. Well, you asked me if the engine was the in the car. The engine is in the car. If the engine packed. Right, but you know what? That's actually being smart, mouth. Well, I apologize. I Don't you agree, Eddie? That's kind of being a smart guy saying, you know what? The motor really isn't in the car because I see the valve cover sticking out. Well, you know what? If I couldn't close my hood in my car, I'd say the, hood, the engine's not in it. But okay, but he can close the hood on that. The hood will well, close fine. He can now. Okay. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, bud. You're welcome. Why is it that some people just got to find faults in everything that somebody else does? Why? Uh, just okay. Can't pay you know, I mean, you know, if you wore a blue shirt today, somebody would come up to you and say, Hey, buddy, you should be wearing a green shirt. Yeah. You know, I see, you, you know, the blue shirts, you got the blue shirt on, but it ain't fitting right. I think I can make it fit better than that. What the fuck, dude? You know, you try to do somebody a square, and all they're doing is the fucking round, bud. Like that. You see that, Eddie? Yeah. <laughs> now, I noticed your trunk area there. You got uh, the bulkhead behind the seats is open. Is that so your son could put his wheelchair up in there? Yes. Oh, okay. So you want to leave that open now when we get the interior done and uh, clean that up real nice? Yes. All right. 
And uh, we'll have Omar, uh, of course. All right, we got our favorite uh, interior guy on the phone, and uh, he says he's calling to see how I'm doing. But this the guy never calls to see how I'm doing, so we're going to find out why he's calling me and what he's doing. Yeah, what's up, bud? Oh, no, Pete. Okay, so you called me and you said, hey, how you doing, Pete? I'm just checking in on you. Yeah. No, you're not, Omar. What's up? Yeah. No, I am. Pete. Okay, Omar. Yeah, you're Omar, the interior guy, get to the point. No, I haven't heard from you in a couple weeks. Are you I'm sure you're not good. calling me to see if the 1934 Ford Coupe's here? Are you sure about that? No, I'm positive. Pete. I think you are, bud, because, you know, I turned the camera on and everybody's listening to you, so you're trying to be a nice guy. How the, I'm always a nice guy, Pete. I always call you whenever I have a That's a bunch on. of bullshit, Omar. What's up, Omar? Yes, I do have the 34 Ford Coupe over here. Okay. Okay, yes, I did go get it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, and yes, we are going to paint it first before you get it. Yes. I know, Pete. And it needs other work done to it before you get it. Okay. Okay, so don't Was call the really, guy. Real elaborate on the whole system there for his son? Not really. It's just got hand controls in it. I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. How long do you think this fucking car will be over there? Three and a half weeks. Don't fuck with me, Omar. Don't stick it in my fucking ass. No, Pete. When, when we get it, Pete, I have nothing else that's going to be on our table. It's that street beast, and we're getting that thing done. So that's why I... I I'm I telling you now, Omar, I don't want to pull... Sure we're done with all our shit, and when that gets here, that's all we're working on, Pete, for that three weeks. I'm telling you right now, Omar, I don't want to be a fucking pole dancer for three and a half weeks or over. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't want to get up on the pole and slide up and down on that son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. You okay. and I both, Pete. Now. Three and a half weeks, Pete. I'll get it done. When I get done painting it, because I'm going to try to whip it out, I'll be giving you a call. You better have a fucking space for it, because my shop is full of cars, and I don't have nowhere to put it. No, we have space. We just cleared out space. Well, good. That's why you're calling, then. Why didn't you just say, hey, did you get that car yet? No, Pete, I'm just... just Hey, why didn't you just say? Why didn't you just say, "Hey, did you get that car yet?" Ready, you call me. Now listen to me, dude. Yes, sir. I gotta paint the car first. The car's gonna look beautiful, and there better not be one scratch on it when I get it back. And you better not have it for more than three weeks. I won't, Pete. I don't want it. When I come over there, we will go over the interior. I am going to show you how to do it. Okay. And it will be done exactly how I say to do it. Exactly. To the T, Pete. To the second T. We're not gonna okay. go. Beyond, over and beyond. We're going to listen this time, and we're going to fucking do what you say. Yeah. All right, I'll call you back when I get ready, okay? Okay, bye. All right. Well, there you go. Another fucking situation we got ourselves in with uh, Mr. Omar, the interior guy. What are we going to do? I don't know. Take the thumb and sit on it for a while. Who the fuck knows? You know, Omar's a hell of a nice guy. They do a great job, but you kind of got to babysit him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen any of my videos? I've seen them all. Wow. So did I help you out with your videos? Did I help you out building that car? Oh, big time. Well, I appreciate that. I saw I saw you also use the uh, door handles on the outside. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, he wanted it. He didn't want the... Uh... Remote? Yeah. Oh, he didn't want the remote? No. Yeah. It really looks like a vintage classic street rod without that grill and that hood on the, the hood. The grill, I mean, the uh, side panels and the hood on it really looks pretty hot. Yeah, that's how we're gonna leave it. Pretty so much. what Armin did, he went ahead and cut all the fenders off. He fabricated the fiberglass and made it look like a hide boy. You can see all this work he did. And then you can't see inside the car, but uh, the back uh, bulkhead behind the seats is actually cut out so uh, his son can slide his wheelchair in there when he's driving it. I'm still amazed by this motor, Eddie. I'm still amazed by the motor. Yeah, I am. Okay. I don't know. I'll tell you what. That's a hell of a situation on that, bud. And the guy ought to be proud with what he did to it. He took it in. He did it by himself. I think, I believe the guy's 67 years old or 65. Young man. He took it in by himself, he worked on it by himself at his garage at home with his paraplegic son sitting there with him. I think the guy did a kick-ass motherfucking job and I think that he ought to be very, very proud of what he did right here, dude. Very beautiful.
right? The only thing that we need to do, the reason this car is here, if you look at the paint job, uh, he went ahead and painted it. And you can see the paint job really isn't that good, Eddie. No. All right. So the reason it's down here is he's got Omar, the interior guy, going to do the interior. And my friend Pete's going to go ahead and refinish and paint the car so we can get it out of here and make uh, him and his son very happy customers. Look at the way that they made that uh, steering. That is some crazy shit, dude. That's some kind of steering reduction box. So the steering wheel will come out and then you put this on here so it'll clear the engine. Is that some wild shit or what? It's wild. We gotta go, Eddie. We gotta go. Thank you very much, Hot Rod Eddie. You got your Hot Rod shirt on. How you been doing, bud? You been doing all right? You, okay. seem, you seem happy. You seem con content and like the weight's off your shoulders and uh, you're getting back to life. Well. Is that right? It's a little bit better now. That's good, bud. That's good. Take it easy, Eddie. We'll see you next time, bud. Thanks for coming by. Oh, all right. I want one of your cards. I'll get you one, bud. No problem. Yeah, address on it. We'll get it for you, bud. Phone number. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. All right, there you go. Uh, we're going to be painting this car. It's just uh, basically an in-and-out custom paint job. Nothing special about it. And uh, I just want to wish Armand and his son the best in life. And, uh, you know, it's a great situation to see people get out there, get off their fucking asses, no matter what age you are or what disabilities you have, and get it done and get it done right. This is a story of leadership is what this is. This is a story of leadership because Armand had taken it upon himself to start something and finish it. He didn't follow anybody. He didn't, uh, you know, take anybody else's advice. He did everything himself and he got it done and did it right. Once again, this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Armand, paraplegic son, 1934, street beast, one-piece body cube, made into the high boy. See you later.